Right, this little section is going to be about mid-latitude cyclones or low pressures that move through the mid middle latitudes. A guy by the name of Bajernis, he's a Norwegian physicist and meteorologist. He studied cyclones as they move through and ended up placing them as what they call the Norwegian model, where they have stages and the beginning versus what it looks like in the middle, when it's actually mature and when it's dying. You can see it, actually you can just notice it by observations, and which is how they did it back in the, the early 1900s. Nowadays we can also look at it from the satellite perspective and see the progression on satellite images and know if the flow pressure is at its mature or if it's in the beginning or it's in the ending stages. But these low pressure systems are the ones that right along the polar front, the polar front is the jet stream, and they are they start out very small and then eventually they grow into a very large storm and then they'll end up dying. So they go through all these phases as it progresses across the country. Now Stage one, there's no cyclone yet, meaning the low pressure hasn't actually formed yet. What you'll end up seeing is you'll have two air masses that are coming together. Typically, there'll be a stationary front. Nothing's really happening. Nothing's, you know, the air masses aren't trying to move forward or backwards, whatever the case is. And so nothing's really happening quite yet. Well, once you get to stage two, it's what they call cyclogenesis, which is the birth of the cyclone. And you'll start to notice an area that has lower pressure than um, surrounding portions of it. You'll start to get weather, meaning you'll start to see clouds, your fronts will start to uh, be noticeable on um, on maps, meaning you'll see a difference between a, an air mass, whether it's cold and warm, and again that's relative to the time of the year, of just how cold and just how warm you're talking about the difference to be. Stage 3 is the open s wave, and the cyclone has strong fronts, meaning it very well noticeable big differences of air masses on one side versus the other. Also in stage three the pressure is starting to fall so it's intensifying. You're going to get clouds, rain, and wind. Stage four is the mature stage. So it's at its peak. The cold front is progressing forward. Eventually it'll catch up with the warm front to get that occluded front and the pressure is going to be the lowest it's going to be for that system. When you're in stage four on satellite, it's very well defined. And what it looks like is what they call the comma head. So on the top one, you can see that's the comma portion, the head of it, and then here's the tail. The cold front rides right along here. And the low pressure's tucked up underneath here. So you get all these clouds wrapping around that low pressure, wrapping around it counterclockwise. Here's another look at it. So you've got the comma head, so the low pressures is in it, and you've got the front would be sweeping out around it. Up here is where it'd be the occluded front, where part of the cold front had caught up with the warm front. Once you get to stage five and six, and different books have different stages, meaning that they'll combine five and six together, so maybe you only see that it lists five stages, or they'll combine three and four. It just depends. This is a little bit more detailed where it spaces it out. So five is the occlusion process where you're starting to get the two air masses to come together, meaning the system's starting to die, the pressure's going to start to rise, which means the storm's um, not intensifying anymore, it's getting better. And then stage six is where it's what they call the decay, and it's really hard to pick out any of the features on the satellite image. Uh, this is just showing you what it looks like from the jet stream level all the way down to the surface. So here's the jet stream. You've got your ridges, the, one, the bumps up, and the troughs, the dips down. High pressures are inside the ridges, and troughs are inside, or cyclones. So low pressures are inside the troughs, and that's where you're going to find those frontal systems. Remember, fronts only go on lows, and that's it. So it's just kind of a way to look at it from top all the way down to the bottom. Now this is the same example I have posted in Blackboard for your assignment where it asks you to, to uh, track a cyclone. And that means you track it for three consecutive days, so they have to be in order and they have to be 24 hours apart. So if you pick 12Z maps, then the next set you're going to get are 12Z as well. If you pick the 0Z, then you pick 0Z for each one. 
So you want a 24 hour change and three consecutive days. And you also need to make sure that on each one of those maps, that same low pressure that you're tracking is on there. And then don't forget to grab the satellite image that goes along with it. Now you might not find it exactly at the same time, like this one's 1145Z, so it's 15 minutes off. That's not a big deal, but don't do 30 minutes. Try to stick it within it, just being as close as possible, or on the nose. So on the top one, I'm going to be following the low pressure. It's up in Canada. And so you can see on the satellite corresponding image, if you look down, you can see it's not quite in its um, mature stage. So remember, don't forget to talk about the stages, describe what's going on on both the satellite and on the surface and why you think it's in what stage it is. So I'm going to say this one is probably getting close to that fourth stage. It's probably in about the third stage. And that's because you can see it's starting to form the comma head. It looks like the fronts are trying to start to pop through on the satellite image. The next consecutive time, 24 hours later, my low pressure has moved from about this position in Canada to just um, above the Great Lakes. And you can see on the actual surface map, the front has dipped pretty far south and it's looking pretty intense. You can now see there's a little bit of occlusion going on. If you look on the satellite, it's starting to have, it's got that comma shape like it did before. The front isn't showing up as intense on this side of it, so there's not a lot of moisture down here. But since it's got that occlusion, it's going to be in that very mature stage because it's just starting, we just got a tiny bit of occlusion going on. And then for the last set of 24, my low moved from the Great Lakes up to this portion of Canada. And you can see the front still dripping south. It's starting to pick up some moisture because it's getting close to that maritime tropical air mass. And you can also tell that it's really starting to have a more defined, here's the comma head, here's the tail. So it's still going to list it as in stage four. So don't think that when you say this, you have to go like two, three, four, or one, two, three, or whatever. It could be the same in two of them, like this one, and then different in one. Like it was just getting started in my first map, and then by the time you get to this, the third map, it was still intensifying. So it was still in that fourth mature stage, which is fine. But again, make sure you get a low pressure that tracks across the country. Just because you find one, you randomly go in there and you're like, oh, there's a low. It's not going to count if you can't get maps 24 hours later that shows that exact same low. So keep that in mind when you're looking at that.